Hello everybody and welcome to episode 3 of the Godot speedrun. In this episode we're going to do one way collisions and we're going to do this enemy and we're also going to clean up the files. Feel free to check out the timestamps in case you want to skip any sections. Let's get started. Alrighty guys, so we're 20 minutes in tutorials and this is what we have. Um, I'm going to delete this next level because we're going to make this level one much bigger and I'm going to delete the level two because we're going to be changing the tile map a lot and we don't want to have to do it twice. First, let's get the level one good and let's do some spring cleaning. So I've created four folders. Also a little FYI, I've added some sprites. So go to the itch.io or the GitHub and you'll get that. I updated also the mushroom and added some more tiles. Cool. Alrighty, whenever you're using a game engine, it's pretty dangerous moving things around because you can corrupt it because there's a lot of dependencies. Also, I think I accidentally deleted this level one GD file because it has a weird extension. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redo the script. I'm going to come in here, clear it. All we had was the for the death thing and we got rid of the next level trigger. So that's OK. Um, save it. Come in here and let's just close that and close this close all whatever and now let's move this level one so the best way to do it is right click move scenes cool let's come in here let's close this first and let's open it again let's add a script we want to put it in the scripts folder nice let's delete all that and all we need to do is link this again let's disconnect body entered and you need to change it anyway because we changed the location of that. Nice. Let's make sure it's working. Cool. No errors. That's nice. Okay. Let's try to move everything else. Whenever you're moving scenes, I would test. Uh, I would test the scenes after the move just to be certain. So, level one uses the character. Seems like it's good. Alrighty. So you can select multiple and move all of them at once. I didn't move this tiles because actually I'm going to delete it. And once you delete the tiles, you need to come into the tile map and delete it here or else there'll be errors. Um, the jump is going to be moved to the sound folder. And that is it. Now it's looking much nicer. Whew. All right. That took a little longer than I would have liked. Alrighty, guys. So we're going to add these new tiles to it. So we're going to come here, click tile map, go to tile set. Come in here, make sure that the setup is selected, and then just draw that. Alrighty, I'm actually going to come in here, go to the tile map, click the eraser, click the rectangle, come here, and we're going to actually add more layers. So, so I'm going to name this layer background, and we're going to add another layer, and I'll call it foreground. And I will show you why I'm doing that. But first, let's go into the paint property and go to the physics layer. And before we paint on these collisions, we're going to click polygon one way. So now uh, what I want is I want to draw these tiles in the foreground. Alrighty, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this square and we're going to draw something like this. Of course, you can design it how you want. If the terrains don't update, then just go over it. There we go. And now when we click the background, first we want to click the tile set, go to the terrains. We have only one terrain. We're going to add another one. And now we are going to paint the second terrain. So it's terrain set zero and then terrain one. We're going to paint it here and do the same pattern as that. Come back to the tile map, go to the background, click terrain one, click square. I need to make that shorter. Now let's try it again. Cool. Looking good. Alrighty guys, I think it's time to add an enemy. So we're going to come over here, put character body 2D, come in here. And, and honestly, I normally use animation players, but I want to show you guys as much Godot as possible. So we're going to use an animated sprite. And in the animation sprite, we're going to, there's a sprite frame, frame property. We're going to put new sprite frame. 
we're gonna call this fly it's gonna run on auto load and then we're gonna click this grid icon go into our assets make sure you have the dragonfly the vertical is one and we have four horizontal frames add them zoom in play it we want to increase this increase it to your liking and we're going to save it in the scenes folder as dragonfly let's add a collision Perfect. Alrighty. Now here, let's look at the foreground. It's much easier. We are going to add a path. And in the path, we will add a path follow 2D. And this is going to be the path of the dragonfly. Before I do the path, I need to add another platform here that we can jump on. So in the foreground, click this. Cool. Okay, that's good. So the path is going to go like this. Make sure the path is clicked. You can see we have all these new properties for adding points, um, adjusting them, and closing the curve. So this is going to be the path that the dragonfly is going to go. I want that to be as straight as possible. Then it's going to come up. You can also adjust the points here. So if I want this third point, uh, I want it to be on the same Y. I can do like that. And then I want that there. And I want that to be on the same X. So let's do 70. And then we can close the curve here. And it'll automatically go. So let's make sure it's negative 144, negative 144. That sounds good. So now on the path follow, uh, this is, if we uh, click the progress ratio, you'll see it goes around. So what we want to do is we want to connect our dragonfly here. And then when we adjust this variable, it does that. So what we want to do is we want to, let's rename this, whatever it'll be called, a dragon. Let's add a script inside the scripts folder, create, delete all of this. Alrighty, so since we have our dragonfly here, we want access to this path follow to denote so that we can adjust this variable and have the dragonfly fly around. So there's two ways of doing that. We can either in the ready function, uh, do var path follow equals get parent because the dragonfly will be a child and that will be its parent, but that's kind of a dangerous way of doing it. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to put the variable up here and we are going to export it so that it's available. When you use this at export, you make that variable available in the editor. So now here you could see that variable is here and I can assign it and we are going to put a type on it. So the type is path follow. So that's the way you set a type. You can make it an int, you can make it a float. That's how we cast types to it. So this is going to be a path follow. So now when I assign it, it only allows me to assign it to a path follow node. So I already have the script here. Cool. So we have a speed variable and we are accessing it through the editor because we have this at export and it's a float. Let's not look at this for now. So I'm going to comment it out. Control K. Control K. Don't worry about that for now. We also have access to the animated sprite. And so we're saying if we have this path follow, we are going to get access to that progress ratio, which was here, this variable, and we are going to increment it by speed times delta. So let's see what happens when we do that. But first, uh, make sure that you have it here. Let's set the speed to one and let's see how that goes. Let's try it again. Alrighty, so you can see it's going a little bit too fast. Let's slow it down. Let's do 0.1 on the speed. Okay. 
Hello guys, this is Future Jackie. I forgot to show one more thing. Uh, when you have your game running, you can actually see what the variables are doing. Like if we want to see the dragonfly, we come here to remote. And if we come here, you could see how all of the nodes are updating. This is very important to know about. And we don't want it to rotate, so let's uncheck that. Cool. And now we have a little issue with the flipping of the H, and that's where this comes in. What we're doing is we have this variable past X, and we're saying if it's not equal to null, we're comparing uh, what the X was before, because if the X is increasing, that means we're going to the right. So if our current X is less than our past X, this flip H needs to be false. Remember when it's false, that means that we're going to the left. And if it's true, we're going to the right. And that is what it's about. And then we are just setting that past H to the global position dot X. And this is how that looks. Let's make sure it turns. Cool. That's good. Alrighty, guys, we're going to end the video here. I'd like to keep them under 11 minutes. Really hope you appreciate it. Catch me in the next one where we will attack this dragonfly and it will attack us. If you appreciate this video, please go check out my Patreon. I really appreciate the watch. See you next time. Bye.